Hey, what's up, everybody? Isaac here with Civil Engineering Academy. Excited to be with you today on another podcast episode. Uh, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. We are excited to share these with you, and hopefully they're providing some value to you. So, uh, you know, there's not that many civil engineering podcasts out there. So share the love, share the love. If you love engineering, share the love. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited today. Today I bring a guest on who recently passed his FE exam. We connected over to LinkedIn because I love to reach out those that are still in school, maybe just graduated, uh, or that have passed through the struggle of the FE or the PE exam and get their experiences and share them with you because I know there are many going through the same thing. So today I bring on Spiro Cola, who uh, graduated from the University of Florida and uh, now works for a company called ECS that does geotechnical work and he's working as a project manager. So we talk a lot about uh, tips regarding school, regarding preparing for the FE exam and uh, regarding landing a job and how that worked out for him, including how he came from Europe into the United States and uh, work to go through school uh, and get a job here. So there's quite a few details there. It's a, it was an exciting episode to do with him. I enjoyed our conversation. Uh, if you do need help with your engineering exams, please check out civilengineeringacademy.com where we have FE and PE resources uh, all uh, to help you on your journey to become a professional engineer and uh, we want to share those with you and get them out to the world. So check them out. Um, and with that, let's go ahead and get to the episode with my interview with Spiro. And I think you're going to enjoy it. So check it out. It's coming up right after this. All right, Spiro, thanks for joining me on the Civil Engineering Academy podcast. I appreciate you jumping on and doing this with me. Thank you for having me. Isaac. Yeah, uh, I thought it would be fun. We connected over LinkedIn and uh, I wanted to bring you on our show as a guest and just kind of talk about your own journey into civil engineering and what you do. So I guess let's let's just start there. How did you find yourself into the world of uh, civil engineering? Well, it's like family thing. Uh, my dad owns like a construction company in Albania, in Europe. And since I was like, oh, like nine, ten years old, I would go with him on the construction sites all the time. And that's what got me into that kind of stuff like watching just people working and like seeing something like seeing an open field and one year later it's like a big building it was like fascinating for me so wow so uh that's neat so your dad is in construction and he's working in europe doing that yeah yeah that's i'm awesome. uh, originally from albania i moved here six seven years ago for school basically i moved here to study civil engineering ah that's great so uh, awesome. So you had family in construction. Is it interesting to learn, I guess, the engineering behind the construction? Because I think sometimes those two sometimes aren't uh, people don't see those. You know, if you're heavy in construction, sometimes you don't understand maybe the math behind why certain things yeah, are I, that way. I think it's interesting just seeing like how many like how many people with different education levels and different backgrounds work on the same project yeah starting from like the geotechnical engineer from the planner the civil engineer the structural and going all the way to the construction worker it's really fascinating that's great and yeah. basically the construction worker which is not like the most educated guy is still understanding the same set of plans that the structure engineer brought that's interesting. So I'm curious, do you have any um, just tips for people that are coming from another country and trying to get an education to become a civil engineer? Did you have any hurdles? Um, do you have any tips uh, around that? I think like the what helped me the most is like math and physics do not have like a language. They are mm -hmm. basically the same. What like the biggest hurdle I'd say was like getting used to the imperial units. No. We, yeah. We only, I, in high school, I only did like metric units and getting used to feet and inches and pounds. It's, it's a little bit difficult, but after you start like learning those, I, I feel I know like imperial, it's a little bit easier for me than the metric units. Yeah, that that makes sense. I never, I mean, you think about that when I'm in when you're in school and you're dealing with different units, but going from different country to here and you really get exposed to the different units, um, I could see that being a, a bit of a challenge to get up to speed on. Um, 
it also helped me because they were like professors that when they did like test problems, they would like start a problem with metric units and that has to like convert everything to imperial. But that was easier for me because I, I knew like, how metric works. That's great. That's great. Um, do you have any um, tips uh, regarding school or someone just starting out into their school journey into Civil Engineering Academy? It can be a difficult degree. Um, any tips regarding that? I would say it's not difficult if you spend some time just studying and like spending like doing like mostly problems, but like also uh, I think like new students should also get involved more, try to network more and like get more, uh, get to know more people in the industry and get involved with like organization. I think ACL, ACI is an organization. America Society of Civil Engineers is a good organization too. And they do, every year they do like competitions for the concrete tunnel, the steel bridge. And I think that's like a really good, a way to to know more people and to learn more that makes sense um and i'm assuming that you had to go through school you had to pass your fe exam yeah did you have to pass that to graduate uh no i only uh university of florida only requires that you take it to graduate so it doesn't matter if you pass it or not so I passed on my third time, not the first time. Gotcha. Well, uh, speaking of your FE then, what um, tips would you have for someone going through that experience? And really, what tips do you have for somebody repeating it that, that's having to go back and take it? I would say just being pretty consistent with studying, uh, spending a lot of time doing problems. Like I was, uh, when I took the FE for the third time, it was... Uh, uh, April 1st this year. So I spent at least two months just like studying, even on the days that I was like working at school and doing school at the same day, I would still like find like 30 minutes or an hour at night just to go over a couple of problems, just to stay consistent on the studies. And I spent like the weekends, most of the weekends studying for the FE and that was all about it. And I, I didn't study the day before. I, yeah. The day before I just took it off. <laughs> A little too late to study that last day, isn't yeah. it? You got to take a break. So you took you put in about two months of prep time on on the time that you passed on the third time, yeah. But I also like did a, just a little bit of studying for the previous two ones. The first one I didn't study at all. I, gotcha. I thought like maybe if I give it a try, I might get lucky. But <laughs> and, it, and then you were the surprised. Time, it seemed luck. You know, have to study a little bit. Of, I was very similar to you, I think. <laughs> so when I did it, uh, well, that's neat. Um, did so you got a bunch of material that helped you pass? Did you do any coursework or anything like that uh, to help you? I just used an online uh, practice course. They had like just the randomization of problems. Gotcha. Like, just giving you throwing problems at you and giving a solution. That's and great. I also like. I think a like, good idea is like to get like used to the manual. That's what helped me a lot on the exam. I studied the manual a lot and there were like questions that they were right there in the manual during the exam. And I think a lot of people get scared of the alternative item type problems that they could throw at you. Um, I'm just curious, but did they throw a lot of, um, of those kinds of problems on you or were they mainly multiple choice? Uh, it was mainly multiple choice. There were some that they like, you have like to match the figure. I remember there was like a problem that it was mostly for the stormwater, I think, where they had like to match the, uh, match the figure, like the evaporation, the rain, the groundwater table, and mm -hmm. things like that, which I found a little bit difficult. Yeah. Unless you have like a, a good memory with pictures. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, let's fast forward then to today. So you got that done. You've graduated. What do you do for work now? Uh, right now I'm working with ECS. It's a uh, geotechnical construction materials. We also do uh, facilities and threshold inspections too. That's great. Um, I'm mostly focused on the geotechnical side. I also do like the rebar inspections, and, like some structural inspections too. 
That's good. Um, what tips would you have to share about finding work or starting your career? Do you have any tips about either finding a job or uh, how you landed your job? And uh, uh, that journey? I landed mine through like connections, basically. I like someone I knew, they worked for the same company in another city, and basically they inter- introduced me to this company. Mm. And the fun thing, I was looking for a job when the pandemic started. So I spent, I spent that summer not interning anywhere because, like, I think most of the companies just stopped hiring at that point. Right. That uh, makes sense. But, like, for other people, I'd say, like, probably going to the career showcases, career fairs. I was lucky because my school also does, like, a career showcase, like, a, an evening with the industry thing where only the civil engineering companies are invited. So it's only for the civil, civil engineering department. That makes sense. Well, I think that's a good tip because it sounds, you know, it sounds like through networking, you were able to find something that that works and aligns with what you wanted to get into. I'm assuming you're really enjoying that geotechnical field uh, as well. It's so it's busy right now. It's busy. <laughs> that's good. Um, where do you see yourself maybe in the next five years? Are you? Well, hopefully I'll get P by then. I'm planning on taking the P soon because I think there's a start that you can take it uh, whenever you not want right now. So you, don't, you do not have to wait like five years to take the P exam. Yep. Many states are decoupling the exam from the experience. So a lot of states, depends on your state, but you can immediately go take the uh, PE after your FE uh, and, you know, get that thing on, uh, over with. Uh, sometimes, though, you will still have to wait for the experience requirement to kick in, but at least you got the exam done and over with, right? Yeah, I think the exam is the hardest part of the one. So I'm planning on taking that one next year, beginning of the next year, January, February, probably. Uh, the good thing is now it's the CBT, so we can, I yep. think we can take it like there, like day top and every week, I believe. That's all right. Um, you know, going back to your career, have there been any fun experiences that you've had that you've been a part of so far that you're like, you know, this is pretty, this is interesting work or this is memorable? I think like on my field of work, everything is memorable because we work like in many projects usually and we get to see like different. Uh, if I'm working on the geotech, we get to see like how the soil is different in like two land parcels that are next to each other. Mm-hmm. And you drill over one and you find like the different soil and the other one, which is like 20, 30 feet away. That's awesome. Um, well, uh, geotech is a fascinating field. It's really like the foundation that everything is built off of. And I know that, you know, your services are used for a variety of projects, whether it's buildings or uh, in my world, we use geotech quite a bit for uh foundation work for transmission lines so uh are you mainly doing work in the state that you're in or do you have to go anywhere else to to do the work that you're doing mostly in the state mostly in florida like north central florida right now with my my company is like i think we have like five or six offices all around florida and like eight around the country so we're mostly focused in our uh in the area that our office covers that sounds good, man. I like it. Uh, it's well, fun because we also get a lot of sinkholes in here. So. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> that 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 makes it more interesting, huh? Yeah, like after rain, there are definitely a couple of sinkholes that open up and that we have to go and like evaluate and see like do we have to grab them or can we just only like backfill them? So. Wow, that's fascinating stuff. Uh, those sinkholes can be large as well so uh, i've seen sinkholes like up to like 50 feet deep i would say 50 feet yeah 50 feet deep probably like 30 or 30 feet radius maybe where where was this sinkhole in florida in gainesville florida yeah <laughs> oh, wow. hope it didn't swallow a car or anything That's no, it was just like a open field usually we get those on the stormwater ponds ah that makes sense 
Um, well, it sounds like a, a fascinating line of work. I'm glad you've been able to, to narrow down um, the area that you enjoy working in and this journey of finding yourself into civil engineering. I think that's really neat. Is there a resource or a, a book that you would recommend to the Civil Engineering Academy audience? I read a lot of uh, history books. So mm -hmm. I would just like I would not like recommend like a book on civil engineering. I I would recommend everyone to read the D Day book about how they landed, and it's a very fascinating story there. Uh, an American general and a British general swam on shore on the Normandy to get the soil sample so they could test it back in the UK if that's if the beaches could support the tanks or not wow that's amazing so you diving into history books and even they've yeah. got geotech involved. yeah i was fascinated when i had that one and just like i took a picture of the page and said, hey, i <laughs> i have to know this it's it's good about like networking so like when you get like to meet someone in another field definitely you tell this is a full story <laughs> that's awesome yeah, I, I know I've seen a lot of World War II shows and documentaries, but man, I don't remember that that little It was fact. just like two or three sentences on that book, but like it really got my attention because it's on my field of work. That is on your radar. That's awesome. Well, we'll try to uh, we'll try to link that so people can check that out. Um, well, Spiro, this has been fun to chat with you about your own journey into civil engineering, your experience with school tips around passing your FE exam for those that uh, may need help with that is if, if people have questions about going into geotech or the FE exam, is there a good way for people to reach out to you? I think LinkedIn is like the perfect tool. It's also very professional. And I would also recommend that like to creating like a bigger network to our new students, like use LinkedIn as much as you can. I, I got, I got in this podcast because of LinkedIn. <laughs> That's right. You got on here because of LinkedIn. So uh, I love reaching out to people that recently passed their exams. I, I want to find out about your experiences. And I think your story is fascinating, especially coming from another country uh, and, de you know, de dealing with that. So um, do you have any family here or anything like that? For just uh, fr fr friends or family? I have uh, two of my uncles are here and Fun fact, like three of my cousins are civil engineers. So, oh, runs so, in your family. Yeah. I actually graduated the, uh, the same time as one of my cousins. So. Are they geotech too or different uh, kind of area? Uh, different. One of my cousins, they, he works on uh, like construction industry as a project manager. Oh, man. Uh, another one is starting. For a civil engineer company, mostly focusing on wastewater, and another one just works on construction materials mostly. Well, I am kind of sensing that maybe you should start your own engineering firm and uh, get the family <laughs> together. Well, that's the plan. <laughs> Got a couple engineers in there. That's great. Well, we'll link uh, people. We'll link your information in the show notes. People can reach out to you if they have any additional questions. But uh, Spiro, thanks for joining me on the podcast. I appreciate you doing this uh, with me. Thank you, Isaac. It was fun. All right. See ya. See ya. Bye.